the sea. Palestine will be free. Palestine will be free. And we will free Palestine. We will free Palestine. Within our lifetime. Within our lifetime. And we will free Palestine. And we will free Palestine. Within our lifetime. Within our lifetime. Say it loud, say it clear. Say it loud, say it clear. We don't want no dinosaurs here. We don't want no to be able to read for you a statement from Ahmed Sadat, 
sent from his cell in Ramon prison in occupied Palestine. How can we, Palestinians, not be internationalists? Connecting struggles and recognizing the common chains of our oppressors is not merely a political choice for our struggle. The reality is unmistakable. We face not only a local oppressor, the Zionist regime, but an international ruling class. The imperialist powers and the reactionary regimes that profit from doing their bidding. This is clear for us in occupied Palestine and for movements around the world whose struggles for justice, human dignity, and the future of the planet itself regularly confront imperialist interventions and coups, relentless assaults on sovereignty, and the domination of the institutions of global capital, such as the IMF. How can we, for example, fight against the dungeon, jails, prisons, and incarceration systems of our oppressors? Is this the task of, our, of the prisoners alone? How can we combat injustices inflicted on women globally? Is this the task of women alone? The same principle applies to struggles for social liberation or the struggles of the indigenous nations for self-determination, sovereignty, and survival itself. Key struggles take place daily in prisons, schools, factories, popular neighborhoods, from the slums of Soweto to the refugee camps of Lebanon to the projects in the U.S. In order for us to accomplish our goals, to achieve our liberation, we must build an international popular front confronting imperialism. This is, was, and always will be a task for all revolutionaries around the world. We stand together in one camp confronting common enemies. Capitalism, imperialism, Zionism, racism, and reaction. From the battles against repressive forces and isolation here in Ramon prison, to the fight to defend indigenous land and popular movements in Brazil, to the movement for peasant and worker justice in the Philippines, we are labeled terrorists because we work to protect our land and our people. In reality, we face the same forces of terror and domination that extract our wealth and resources and exploit our people in the most brutal of circumstances. The goal of every struggling revolutionary prisoner, whether in the prisons of the US, the Philippines, Turkey, or the Zionist jails in Palestine, is to obtain freedom, not a momentary amelioration of torture. We are not simply seeking to moderate or reform the social and economic conditions of our people. We must be clear, we are struggling for socialism, for an alternative world, and to achieve victory, we must struggle together. Ahmed Sadat, General Secretary, Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine, Ramon Prison, Occupy Palestine. Thank you. Not another nickel, not another dime, no more money for Israel's crimes. Not another nickel, not another dime, no more money for Israel's crimes. Not another nickel, not another dime, no more money for Israel's crimes. Not another nickel, not another dime, no more money for Israel's crimes. are from Jewish Voice for Peace. I would like to call up Eitan to speak. Hi everyone, thank you so much for, for having me here. It is such an honor to speak to all of you. Um, I'm here from Jewish Voice for Peace. We are an organization of Jewish people who have a long history of opposing Zionism, opposing militarism, opposing settler colonialism and ethnic cleansing. And we are here to stand with the Palestinian people in solidarity and to express our anger and our disgust at what is happening right now in East Jerusalem and across Palestine. We're watching in horror, in horror, as at the demolitions, at the imprisonments, at the murders, at the lynch mobs. 
and we know that this is a moment that is not unique, this is not new, this is a moment that is expressing what Zionism is and has always been, and I'm, I'm, just, I'm just so glad that I'm able to be here with you to express this solidarity, to come together, and I know that this movement is strong, that you are holding it down, this movement is growing, and just believe so deeply in my heart that we will see a free Palestine, and of course to free all Palestinian prisoners, and a free, free Palestine. Alright, 
<laughs> Every force that attempts to exile us, police us, surveil us, and incarcerate us must be dismantled. Our liberation is linked with the liberation of all oppressed people, including our black, brown, and indigenous siblings. I make these connections not to say that these fights are the same, but to show how Zionist settler colonial violence American settler colonial violence and capitalism all operate along similar lines and for similar purposes. So with that, we can say and repeat after me, land back, land back. Land back. housing for all, housing for all. Free our prisoners, free our prisoners. Keeping our 
focus our movement and our people united Woo! unfragmented unscattered until we free all of palestine from the river to the sea our people united will never be defeated our people united will never be defeated our people united will never be defeated our people united be defeated our people united will never be defeated our people united will never be defeated there is only one solution there is only one solution Sami Dun to speak next. Salam alaikum. Thank you. Here with Sami Dun, the Palestinian Prisoner Solidarity Network. And today we're here to highlight the struggles of Palestinian prisoners. In particular, Ahmed Saadat, and to draw attention to the ongoing struggles in Sheikh Jarrah and Al Nakal. These two things are intricately connected. The right to resist occupation is contingent on the rights of Palestinian prisoners and vice versa. We know from experience that if we resist genocide, we will be called terrorists and criminals and aggressors. We know that in the Zionist dungeons, our people, and especially our leaders, are isolated, tortured, and abused. We also know that the popular masses are on our side when we say that the Zionists are the real terrorists, criminals, and aggressors. They're on our side when we fight back against Zionist abuse by any means necessary. That is our that is our court and our jury. Theirs is the verdict that Ahmed Sada and others like him await when they are accused of crimes by the Zionist entity. With every flare up of Israeli aggression, there are new prisoners and new martyrs. Our continued support for prisoners, the martyrs and their families shows future militants that they will not be left behind. It shows that every prisoner in Palestine, it shows every prisoner in Palestine that we are with them, that all the good people of the world will always be with them, and we will never believe the lies the colonizers say about them. Every prisoner in Palestine is there because of their steadfast refusal to accept racism, imperialism, and settler colonialism. Ahmed Sada has been in prison for 20 years because of his refusal to roll over and accept genocide, because of his dedication inside and outside of prison to Palestinian national liberation. To quote Ahmed Sadat, the Palestinian prisoners movement represents a living witness to the continuation of our people's resistance to the Zionist settler colonial project. We need to stand with them and support their struggle against the Zionist criminals, whether it's in Al-Nakhab, in Jericho, or in Sheikh Jarrah. And we need to have the steadfastness, the sumud, to continue our education, agitation and solidarity, not just when Palestine is trending, not just when the voices have gotten too loud to ignore, but every single day until soon when Palestine is liberated from the river to the sea. Woo! From the river to the sea! From the river to the sea! Palestine will be free! Palestine will be free! Min al Maya al Maya! Min al Maya al Maya! Palestine Arabia! I'm sorry I can't speak on the mic, it's Saturday, uh, it's a religious restriction, but I hope you'll be able to hear me, my voice is not great today, but I am here, we are here, we have a group of people here, we're standing up in protest, joining all of you, when we are witnessing all what's happening in Palestine. This is my son, I have a family, I know what family means, I know what human life means, we have close friends, I have close friends, I have neighbors in the area where I live in New York who are Palestinians from generations. 
when we witness what is happening in Palestine, we see, we follow what's happening with the political prisoners, the attacks on al Nakab. We see people being killed, murdered, young and old, of all ages. This is unacceptable. When we see Sheikh Jarrah still under attack, when we see buildings being demolished, people being arrested, entire families left, homeless, this is unacceptable. And we say this as Jewish people. This is against Judaism, killing, stealing, oppressing an entire people. All of this is criminal. All of this is anti-Jewish. And on top of all of this, on top of all these crimes, they use my name. They call themselves Jewish. They call themselves the State of Israel. This is an additional crime to all what they commit. Sadly, we see Sheikh Jarrah, we see those settlers. Some of them pretend to be religious. Let me tell you, if we sadly, sadly see a religious person stealing, doesn't make theft religious. In no way does the acts of those people, whether they look religious or they don't, it doesn't make it right, it doesn't make it religious, it doesn't make it holy. This is all used to confuse the masses and then come and blame you all and blame us all that we are anti-Semitic if we stand up and we oppose crimes committed by some people from Jewish descent. Mm. This is sad, this is bad. Let me tell you, there's so much propaganda being used to silence people. I'm so glad to stand here in Beirich today while well, just two weeks ago there was an incident, everybody knows, mm -hmm. where people came in with IDF shirts, provocating lo lo local residents. Obviously, obviously that IDF shirt was not welcome there. It shouldn't be welcome anyway. But, but this is being used for propaganda that Muslim people, Palestinian people, are not tolerant to Jews, Jews. I was listening to some local politicians in New York. They said that these Israeli boys wearing an IDF shirt, and listen to this, this is a quote, they were attacked just because they were Jews. The two American elected officials said so. That's why I am here. And what they said is that the same that happened in the Soviet Union, that they proposed to Jewish people, just take off your kippah, your religious head covering, and we love you. Same happens here with Israel. And what I'm saying is, I'm proudly standing here in Beirich, being Jewish and wearing my Jewish religious outfit. And nobody ever told me one bad word for being Jewish. And I said this in public before, never, can anybody say, can anybody show an incident where a Jewish person was attacked because he was Jewish by any Palestinian in any part of the world? I am standing here in Beirich. I visited Gaza twice since the siege, since 2009. And I visited so many Muslim countries. And I say this in the United States of America. I was never attacked. No bad word was said to me by a Muslim, by a Palestinian. Because we were Jews, and we were attacked by Israeli Zionists. Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. Thank you, Shukran.
and mourn our martyrs and, and we rage over the martyrdom of our community leader in Palestine, a community leader by the name of Hatsuleyman Hatalin, 75 years old from Masafirieta in the South Hebron Hills, who was killed when occupation forces intentionally ran him over with a truck near his village, leaving him critically injured, eventually succumbing to his injuries weeks later. Allah yarhamu. Hatsuleyman village of Melkhair has been the site of constant raids, house demolitions, and land theft by the occupation. While the nearest settlement continues to expand, he was well known in the, his community for leading protests against settlement expansion and in defense of Palestinian land. He fought until the very end, regardless of his old age. We have also seen what has happened to the families in Sheikh Jarrah, particularly the Salahid family, who hours after had their home demolished by occupation forces and had those who were defending it violently assaulted, arrested, and detained, Mahmoud Salahia was seen raising the victory sign while being transferred to a courthouse, even after they demolished his house, even after they arrested his family, and even after they arrested him. He was still smiling with the victory sign up. And when you see this sign in Palestine, this is not the peace sign. This is the victory sign because there is no peace as long as Israel exists. There is no peace as long as Zionism thrives. There is no peace on stolen land and there will never be peace on stolen land. So with the whole world watching Sheikh Jarrah, our people directly confronting Zionist violence remains steadfast and certain of victory. This is why we rally today in defense of all Palestinians resisting genocide, colonization, and imprisonment, and demand freedom for all Palestinian prisoners, from Ahmed Sadat to Hisham Abu Hawash, to the heroic members of the Salhiya family, to all those resisting, resisting ethnic cleansing, from Sheikh Jarrah to al Nakab and beyond. The struggle for Palestinian freedom celebrated a victory a few weeks ago when Palestinian political prisoner Hisham Abu Hawash ended his 141 day hunger strike after securing his freedom and securing his release for February 26th. <laughs> However, we know that 500 Palestinians remain in administrative detention and thousands of Palestinians are currently in prison or threatened to be in prison at any time, not only by the Zionist entity, but even the Palestinian Authority collaborating with the Zionist entity. Mm -hmm. yes. oh. So we take to the streets today to demand their freedom and let our people in Palestine know that we stand with them. The world is watching and fighting against Zionist oppression.
administrative detention in Palestine, Zionists arrest our people without a trial, without even charging them with anything. So we can see the similarities there. And as of this past Tuesday, the hunger strike had grown to an estimated 200 people. One of the largest collective protests in Rikers in recent memory. Following on the heels, following on the heels of multiple victories by Palestinian political prisoners from Hisham Abu Hawash, Gaid al Fasfus, Mikdad Qawasmi, Ala al Araj, who went on a hunger strike in protest of their administrative detention without charge or trial in recent months and secured their freedom, we salute the heroic hunger strikers at Rikers who have taken matters into their own hands to fight for their basic rights. From the U.S. to Palestine, we will be free and we will take back what's ours. Remember that the fight does not end here today. There are all kinds of campaigns that are ongoing in support of the Palestinian liberation struggle and we invite everyone here to join us for the week of action, which has been going on all week and ends tomorrow, of digital action as we take the salt and water challenge and continue our pressure on the International Committee of the Red Cross and uplift the struggle of prisoners through their cases and demands. So if you go on our Instagram, WOL Palestine, you will find more instructions on how to participate in the salt water challenge. Take a video of yourself doing the salt water challenge in solidarity with Palestinian prisoners and use the hashtags free them all and administrative detention, salt water challenge, and free Palestine. Woo! I know not everybody could make it today for the because of the freezing weather and because of concerns of COVID. But you can do the salt water challenge and invite your friends and family who couldn't make it today to support in the digital week of action to, su to support Palestinian prisoners. Woo. 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 I want to thank the organizations that made this possible today from Samadun Palestinian Prisoner Solidarity Network who helped coordinate actions internationally for the freedom of Ahmed Sadat to the Palestinian youth movement who you heard from earlier Jewish Voice for Peace and Within Our Lifetime. I know it's freezing cold and we don't want you all to get sick. We want people to go home and continue this action for Palestine. We want people to not let it stop here. We want people to bring Palestine back to your campus, back to your workplace, back to your front circles, back to wherever you can bring it. Because we can not only be fighting for Palestine when we witness explicit home demolitions or martyrs begin to pile up. We know that this entire time, from May until now, the killing of Palestinians and the demolition of Palestinian homes have not ended. And we should not wait for it to get so dire for us to speak out. So continue to build, get involved, join uh, one of these organizations, join your SJP chapter and build the movement for Palestinian liberation. Not today, but every single day. Woo! Thank you everybody for coming.